Welcome back, everybody. This is the third and final part of our series where we're making a beautiful Champlivet enamel flower. And in the first two episodes, we fabricated our lovely base, uh, we've bent our wires, we added some lovely texture, and we fired them, and they are ready for some enamel, which I'm very excited about. And uh, we are using unleaded enamels for this project. In moving forward, we're definitely going to get into the leaded. I use mostly leaded for my work, but a lot of times um, the unleaded are a little bit more available. Um, some craft centers kind of restrict you to the use of the unleaded. So I wanted to do a whole project, a couple of the beginning projects, just using the unleaded enamels. And so we have been using so far the 2020 clear for silver as the base and it came out pretty good it's a little bit more yellow than some of the the leaded clears and i'm going to just show you an example um, this one and i don't know if you can actually tell the difference this is a leaded base and it's actually um a, a very pale blue which i think because it has a blue caster it actually looks a little bit whiter but you know in the scheme of things once we get the colors on here you're really not going to be able to tell the difference um, so don't don't stress out if it has a little bit of a yellow cast to it that's just kind of the nature of the beast i found that if you under fire it it gets a little yellow if you over fire it it gets a little yellow it's just you know Okay, sera, sera. So we're gonna get started and we have, I've washed all our enamels and I will include a list of all the colors that we're gonna be using um, in, the, in the notes to the video. So you'll be able to, um, and I'm probably also going to have a little sample set with all these colors that we're using for just this project will be on my Etsy page as well. If you want to just get, you know, a quarter ounce of all these colors and just make this project, that would be delightful. So let's get started. I'm going to, because the background here is, I don't have the drawing, I left it at home, but I have, this is the original piece that we're kind of working from. So we're gonna do a very similar color thing. And you can see how much darker the background is. And so I don't want any of those dark purples or blues to creep under and contaminate a really nice uh, leaf and the lighter colors in, in the area. So what we're gonna do is, I'm only gonna do, I'm gonna do the flower and the leaf, and then we're gonna fire it before we put any background color on because that might seal, if there's any little gaps, I can even see, look, I'm sticking my thing under these things. Um, if there's any little gaps like this, um, they'll get sealed. Um, sometimes I'll even do, two, if it feels like there's really big gaps, um, I'll do two coats, but I think one's gonna be enough. So let us get started with that. I'm gonna start with the flower. And so with the flower here, we're going to be using um, kind of these blues and purples. And these two dark ones, um, we're gonna use in extreme moderation. They're just gonna be like the deepest shadow. We're really gonna focus on, uh, let me show you, tell you the colors, the 2600 opal blue, um, the cascade, and then this opal white is gonna be kind of our main, these are gonna be our main you know, colors and these are gonna be kind of dark. But that being said, I'm gonna probably, I might start with, sometimes it's like good to start with the dark and the light. Um, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with kind of our middle tones here. And so I have a brush, it's very small, it's not expensive. And off the camera, I've got some very clean distilled water, a little paper towel to clean my brush. And um, so let us, let's do this. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead, I like to put the clean water right on my piece. So I'm just getting some, you could dip it in, but I don't think it's necessary because we're gonna use a little bit of the capillary action to help with this blending. And so, there we go. We've got some water on there and God, I'm feeling all like hesitant. It's always so hard to know where to start. All right, you know what? I'm going to actually start with the white. This is a really pretty opal white. Um, I did not wash this because I want it to be a little bit kind of cloudy, not cloudy, but opaly is I guess the, the word for that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of this whole area, the tips of the flowers. And you can see I have like a nice big blob. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place the opal right at the tips of those leaves. And I'm doing, I'm gonna do these three all at once because they're very similar. 
And so you can see I just have that. And then I'm going to do some of the cascade. This is kind of the, the medium color. And I'm going to, I'm gonna start only with the cascade and see where that takes me and add the darker in the second firing. And I'm just gonna set this a little ball of the cascade blue right along the other edge. And it's always nice to have a little bit of a darker color right hugging a wire because it's gonna really make that wire pop. If you have two light colors abutting a wire, the wire tends to kind of disappear visually. So there we go. So you can see I basically have a little bit of the blue. I've got this kind of no man's land right in here. And I'm just gonna get some water and start blending them, maybe a little bit more water. And if you find that you're having trouble blending, it might be that you actually don't have enough enamel on the piece. Um, you need to have enough enamel. I'm not actually gonna put a little bit more of the white. There we go, there. That's looking good. And I'm just kinda like feathering it together. I'm not gonna worry too much because there we go there's such kind of like floaty cloudy colors so not cloudy but just floofy colors so they're just going to be very pretty all right and so i think we've got the blue is going to kind of wrap all the way around so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do a little bit of blue in the center you know what, I'm gonna do the dark blue in the center. See, this is thinking on my feet. This is the aqua, which is a really beautiful, always, always a lovely addition. So let's go ahead. And I wanna make sure that there's water in there or else if this sits on top, you could get an air bubble right there. So I'm gonna kinda of set that in right like that. And then I'm going to get some, I've got a little, this is just, a chopstick that I put a, I glued, I drilled a little hole and I put a little needle in there. Um, and that's just to make sure there's no air pocket under there. So I'm just gonna kinda poke that. Oops, there we go. So that's like a really dark blue and we're gonna use that in moderation. So I'm gonna immediately go back to my cascade. And, cause I like to have the dark here cause it's really gonna make this wire, the curly Q wire pop in a good way. So we're going to see how it kind of, it's hard to get it in there, but I'm just gonna use my brush. And it's such a small space that just kind of like feathering it just a little bit back and forth is gonna do a good job of blending. Um, so you can see that. And um, I'm probably gonna start bringing a little purple in because we've got the blue along this slide. So I don't really want to use the exact same blue there because I like to go. So I'm going to go into my, I know I'm calling it a purple, but it's technically, um, this is the opalescent blue. And oh, all these colors have been washed except for the two opals. And I have a whole separate video about how you are going to wash your enamels. Uh, and that is on, it's, I think it's on Vimeo and it's also a free video on YouTube. So if you haven't already, you can definitely check that out. So I'm gonna blend in with this purple just for a nice scene where we're going. There we go. So we're gonna kind of start working our way out because we've got the purples kind of on this side. And I'm gonna always go back, you know what's gonna tie this all together. We've got the purples and the blues, but the opal white is gonna be kind of all over. It's going to kind of unify everything. So I've got a nice big blob of the opal white and I'm just going to set it because I'm going to use the opal to really make those little ends of the petals pop. So we're going to go in here and we're going to do two coats of the color, maybe three if we need it. I'm going to put a little bit more here and then once we get the colors exactly how we want them we'll switch to a, the clear which is the 2020 all the way to the end and you can see i'm just kind of feathering that just a little bit and that is looking good all right so we've got 
and see how easy it is. I'm not spending a hundred hours. <laughs> I'm not well. I'm not. I'm not really. I'm just kind of getting the colors in there. And don't forget that at any time, if you don't like how it's working out, just rinse it under some water and start over. You are under no obligation. Um, so I think I'm going to do. I'm going to bring in a little bit of the darker purple right here, which is the Concord, and it's really dark. So a little bit will go a long way and I'm just going to set that see how dark it is so I am going really light with that but that's really going to make those little that petal pop that petal pop poppity petals all right see how it kind of like it's just ever so much hugging that um, same goes in here because you could remember you can always go darker but unless you're going to be grinding things out you can't really it's harder to go light. All right, so I've got a little bit of that purple, which I'm I'm happy with, and I'm gonna put a little bit just to kind of like, with flowers, it's kind of nice to start in the center and work your way out. Uh, but I'm sure that everybody has a different method. All right, so I'm loving that. And then I'm gonna go, because we started with the purple, it's gonna segue into the opal blue. And so I'm just going to put this in the middle. See, I'm just kind of setting it right on. And I'm leaving space because I'm definitely going to want to put a little white. So, and I'll do a little bit more blending in a second. But I want to get kind of all my colors on there. Oops. And here is the opal white that I'm going to put right on this edge here. There we go. So it's right now it's kind of it looks like a, a kind of a stripe thing, but we're going to get a little bit of water and I'm just going to drop a little bead of water right on top of that and then just ever so gently kind of feather it all together. There we go. Satisfying. Very satisfying. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Let's do a little bit more going back to. Um, you know, this one, this petal right here is kind of behind, so I may not even do any. I might just do just the, the two colors, so it'll visually kind of recede into the background. Um, but you can make your flower however you want it. There we go. Oh, and I'll also have a little drawing with where I'm putting which colors, so if you want to follow along exactly. Um, you'll be able to have that. I haven't made it yet, but I promise to make it before we, well, it's Tuesday. No, it's, it's Monday right now, so it'll be done. I promise. Let's see. I'm going to do a little bit of the opal. And really, I'm just kind of working my way around. Um, and I can see I have a little bit of the purple got in and so I'm just gonna scoop it out right like that the best time to remove enamel is before you fire it and I'm gonna do a little bit of the darker blue because I'm gonna kind of meet in the middle so we did this area and I'm gonna kind of go around this way I know so I've got the aqua, which is going to be our darkest of the blues, and we used it up here. I'm going to just do the exact same thing. Just, oh, that's, see, that's, I feel like that's too much, so I'm just going to get rid of some of it. Less is more with this really dark stuff. So I'm just going to just right in this little corner, and then right in this little corner. And then right in this little, there we go. And remember, everyone's, it's always going to be a little different because you have, oh, here's the cascade. You know what? I'm going to do with this way. I'm going to start with the opal and then I'll put cascade in the middle. So, so many different ways you can do it. So here's my opal white hugging this line over here. There we go. I might as well put some of that over there. 
and same goes for over here there we go and I'm gonna go back to my cascade which is my light blue and I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm just going to kind of just put it right like that and I'm gonna get it in all three little areas and then I'll do a little bit of the blending and you know what I'm going to do that's going to be crazy because we have a little purple. I kind of want to bring the purple right into this leaf just to so it's not purple on this side and blue on this side. It's kind of nice to wrap the colors around. So I'm going to use a little bit of the opal blue, which we're going to call purple. It depends. And that's just going to kind of visually kind of tie that in and I might actually put just a little bit more of that right here there we go and let's see what we can do blending wise I'm going to go back over here it's just because of it has so much water it almost pretty much blends itself if you the water just kind of pulls it together but we're just going to feather that all right and so let's see probably purple I think purple all the way around is going to be what I want to do because I've got a lot of blue here so it'll be nice. I'm going to start with the Concord and remember, oh my gosh, less is more. So I'm going to just set this little guy there we go. That's good. And then we're going to go to the, let's do the opal white. I was enjoying. Got a nice big blob of it right there. There we go. And just a little bit right there. And the good thing about this opal white is it gets more opaque or translucent it kind of the more you the use it so if you use just a little bit of it it'll be very washed out but if you kind of do layer upon layer it gets a little bit milkier as you go so we're going to come back to our middle color which is the opal blue and just ever so much i'm laying it in just a little bit I'm actually gonna put on there we go there we go and you can see how dark that Concord is it's almost gets a little speckly it's it's so dark but I'm, I'm cool with that all right so I'm liking how that's looking and we're gonna do the leaf next All right, the first coat of the flower is done, and so we are going to do our lovely leaf next. And I have picked out three shades of green here, a dark, a medium, and a light. Um, I love this kind of chartreuse chrome color. It's just, I find it so happy. So we're gonna do happy greens here. So I think this is a peacock, this is a leaf green, and this one is lime. And to be honest, I think this leaf green is not actually a Thompson, but it is an unleaded. I think it's Milton Bridge, but I'll have to look it up. Um, they all play, as long as they're all unleaded, they generally all play well together. And I just love this really apple green. And so this was the, kind of the one that I was like, you know what, we're gonna use it. Um, and you can find it online. I'm sure that e-namels will have it. Um, or someplace else. I'll find it and maybe I'll give you a link to it. But I love this little apple leaf green. So we're gonna do that. And so we're gonna do light. And then right along here, we're gonna do a little bit of dark. And so I'm going to start with the light color. So remember, we're going to get a little bit of water. Let's get some, let me move these out of the way. There we go, we got some water there. And I'm gonna start with the lightest color, which is the lime. Look how vivid that is. It's very pretty. 
Let's see if we can kind of tilt that down. And I'm going to just, and this is such a, a lime color, like you could take this into the, the oranges or you can take it into the greens. It plays well with a lot of the colors. So, but we're gonna use it as a green, going into the greens. So you can see I'm just kind of hugging the, because this is gonna be dark, it'll be nice to have this light color right here because it's gonna really make the background pop. And so I'm feeling pretty good about that. All right, and then we're gonna go for our medium green, which is our leaf green and this is i think it's the equivalent i think what i like about it is kind of um there's an, a matching one there's a leaded one called um n37 um chartreuse is one of my favorite colors so i think that's probably why I, this color appeals to me so much so i'm going to just put this one right here because i'm thinking we're just going to do the medium and the light on this top leaf and I'm gonna, with this one, kinda try to hug the, the line. We don't have a lot of space to do a, a whole lot of fancy shenanigans, but, so you can see I just have like a little bit of a line. And then, I'm just gonna use some water and just maybe even get a little bit more of the light. There we go. And we'll just gently feather it together. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna do our darker color is gonna kind of hug here. So let us, and we've decided that is the peacock. So I'm going to get a little bit of this darker color. And this is the same thing with that other darker color. It's pretty potent, so I'm gonna go a little lighter to start out with and just use a little bit. Um, you can always add more. And it's hard to take it away. So I'm going to actually start right like that. And just See how I'm just kind of pushing it right up against that line there. And then we're going to go to our medium color. This is the leaf. And I'm going to really kind of set it pretty close because I want... Trying to decide if I want to do a little bit of the, I do, you know what? I'm gonna get a little bit of the lime right on this little tip here. There's, a, there's enough room in this area to do dark, medium, light. And if I don't like it, in the next one, I'll just cover it over with the medium, so it'll be fine. And I'm gonna get a little bit more. See, I'm gonna put this whole big drop of water on there. Boing, that'll help everything. If it feels like it's really gritty when you're trying to blend your colors, you probably just need to add a little bit of water. Either add more enamel, because you don't have enough enamel to, to be on there to be blending, or just add more water. There we go. And then I'm thinking right here is just gonna be the medium. Same goes for here. And here. I'm putting kind of a big blob, there we go. I'm liking that. There we go. I am enjoying that very much. All right, so you can see we've got, and I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, in case anything is creeped under, although we're putting a really dark color under there, um, we can go ahead and clean that up real fast by getting a little tiny piece of paper towel. 
um, before you try to clean things up, you kind of have to almost wick the moisture out because until you do, it's just going to kind of push things around. So I'm just wicking a little bit of the moisture out. And then with a very clean, damp brush, I'm just going to make sure that there's no little travelers under there. Like I say, oops, it's the, it's going to be pretty dark so you wouldn't even notice it, but just in case, um, I'm feeling that's looking pretty good. All right, we're going to let this dry and we're going to fire it at 1450 degrees for two minutes for the most part, give or take 30 seconds, depending on any kind of variable when it's melted. And then we're going to do the background. All right, this has been fired and it looks really good. A little bit of yellowing right here, but I think that once we get the more layers of the opal white, it's going to be just fine. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and actually do one more coat over the flower and the leaf before getting into our background because I'm not convinced that all our, our things are sealed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do exactly the same level of detail, like of blending. Um, exactly the same and I might actually just speed up the process because you don't necessarily need to see the exact same thing again. I'll pause it if I'm doing anything different. So how's that? <laughs> Does that sound good? Excellent. All right, so this is our second coat of on the flower and the leaf. And we are going to, I can see a little fleck. Let me get that fleck. Oh, there we go. See that fleck I just pulled out? Um, we're gonna let that dry and we are going to fire it for two minutes and then we'll come back and do the background. Alrighty, we have just fired this and it's looking good. You know, I am, I'm not totally thrilled. There's a little bit of yellowing with this opal blue um, that I was using. And you know what? I think for the actual, if you were gonna buy a little sample, I would actually switch that out. Um, see how similar these are? This one on the top is a little bit more vibrant. That's the 2600 opal blue. Um, but this is the Periwinkle 2615. I actually would probably switch to this because I know this one never goes yellow, but I can see, I didn't, I made, I was really careful not to overfire it, but right here and here, it's just gone a little bit kind of a golden color, which actually, it's kind of pretty. It looks like a peony or something, but I think moving forward to avoid that, I'd probably switch out these colors. And so I'll make a big note of that. Um, maybe switch to the 2615 Periwinkle, which is some of these unleaded can be a little bit um, uh, temperamental, shall we say. Temperamental is a good word. So we're going to roll with this. It's now a peony, whatever. Um, <laughs> and that's what happens like when we do these things together. Um, you know, the best of us, um, there's a little bit of chaos in the world. But so we're going to move forward and embrace the little bit of yellowing and 
um, going to do the background. So we have two colors on our background. We're going to do Concord purple down here and then this beautiful nitric blue up top and we're going to kind of blend to the top. And I think I'm going to start at the top here with the nitric blue. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some clean water down. And I'm probably going to do my blending is going to happen kind of like right about here. So I'm going to have to like pretty much just put the nitric blue here and put the purple here and then we'll, we'll work on the blending um, halfway through. So let's just get started with that. And because there's a lot of, this is actually a lot of real estate here. So I'm really going to go, you know, fairly thick, not like a spoonful thick, but you know, a dollop. We're going to go a little dollop. So, and I'm just carefully kind of setting it in and I'm really paying attention to what's happening with the flowers and making sure it's not getting over here and it seems to be doing just fine. So, but this blue is really going to make that flower really pop. Um, and th another reason not to go too dark on your flowers, you, you really want that that nice kind of bright flower on the, the dark background and so I'm going to say I'm going to there we go let's get some purple on and decide where we're going to do well actually probably the blending we'll put a little bit more of the blue on so I can get some of it there we go, right about to there. There we go. That's looking good. And let's get some of that purple on. That's the Concord. Now, Yeah, those opalescents can be just delightful when they work out perfectly, but they can be like probably like little teenagers. You never know when it's going to be a problem. I'm going to be a little bit, see I'm getting a little, I've got a lot of detail right there. So I'm going to get kind of clean off my brush. And make sure that everything is good there we go I just make sure that there's no purple going into that leaf so I'm just gonna kinda there we go that's looking good and if there is it's fine um, what I'll do is before I do anything before I fire it I'll let this dry and then you know just if there's anything that's kinda gone into the leaf or the flower a little damp brush We'll just wipe them away. So, but obviously, best not to get it in there in the first place. But sometimes it's unavoidable. All right. So we've got, and I'm going to do purple down here. There we go. And there's even enough space. You could do three colors. I mean, you've got some a nice transition. You could pick like an intermediary color that might be nice. I'm going to make sure that's. Good, and we're getting close. So I think, get a little bit of the purple. Make sure it's on this side. There we go. And I'm gonna have like the purple hug the leaf here. And here. And here, see how it just makes that little leaf really pop all of a sudden. Um, and I'm going to bring my purple up just a little bit more there, and a little bit more. And I'm probably going to actually start in the middle. Let's go go back to our blue, our nitric, and I'm just going to, oops, do a little bit. Right like that. 
But see how it's like blue here and then purple. It's not very much space to be blending, but I, I like how, and we'll do a little bit more over here. We'll probably bring the purple up a little bit, get some of the purple. In fact, I might even, you can always remove a little extra. I feel like I want the purple to go up a little farther. So look, I'm just kind of scooping up a little bit of that blue. Nothing says you can't remove it before you fire it. And then that gives me a little bit more blending. And I'm just kind of like, gonna do right like that. All right, and it's a bit lumpy gumpy, but that's fine. I'm gonna just do a little feathering and maybe even bring the, pur the purple kind of up here. So we're really blending on the piece. And this is just to kind of see where we are. And this, you know, the next firing is gonna be where we kind of get everything exactly how we want it. And let's go to this little area over here. And see, I kind of actually think the blue is gonna come down. The purple kind of comes up here and see how there's gonna be kind of like, instead of a straight line, it's always nice to kind of do a more of a diagonal. I'm sure that there's some design element um, I did go to art school, so I'm sure that that's true um, at some point. Someone told me about that. So I'm going to wrap the blue right around there and pull the blue down just a little bit farther. And I'm really putting quite a bit of enamel on here because this is a dark color. There we go. And I'm just right where these are kind of coming. I'm just feathering it. And because they're almost the same tone, they, they blend really well. There we go, I'm really pleased with that. All right, and I'm gonna put a little bit more enamel. See how it's really light right in here? I feel like I can get away with putting just a little bit more, but I'm gonna just, it's very wet, so I'm just gonna ever so, just wick up just a little bit of that moisture right there, because it was a bit of a puddle. And gonna do a little bit more purple here and right around here is good and maybe a little bit of the blue right here there we go All right, we're gonna let that dry. Um, and I think it looks pretty clean. I don't see any areas where it has gone where it shouldn't. So we're gonna just let that dry and fire it. And then we're gonna do it again. Nothing like doing something twice, but that's for the good, that it's good because we'll get to do any blending or if there's like a weird line, we'll kind of take care of it in the next one. All right, this has just come out and cooled. And you know, I'm actually kind of diggling, diggling, <laughs> diggling how opaly this is. It is a little yellow, but it's actually quite beautiful. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you, if you buy the little thing on Etsy, I'm gonna give you both the opal blue and then the periwinkle. And you can decide for yourself um, what you wanna do with this because you know, it is a little yellow, but it definitely has this really nice little glimmer that I'm digging. Anyway, so let's continue with our another coat on our background. And you can see we have a little bit of blending that we need to kind of finesse up through here. So I'm actually probably gonna start in this area and maybe bring the, the purple up just a little bit farther. Um, it's like a nice, I'm really enjoying the, the rich purple. So I'm gonna do a little bit more stuff with that. So let's get some clean water on there and but that's the good thing about having like, you know, two coats. The second coat is really kind of seeing what you have and doing a little bit more finessing with the, the blending. Cause you can see I have a bit of a line like purple, blue, straight up like that. And so I'm gonna actually bring the purple up. Probably I'm gonna do purple all the way in here. Um, and the blue will still be there, but all right, apparently. 
There we go. Oops. Actually, let me get a little. There we go. I'm going to go all the way right in here. There we go. Yeah, I've got nothing interesting to say about this. So, just right in this area. Kind of punching up the purple a little bit. See how it's getting a little sandy? I'm going to add a little bit more water. There we go. And so I'm actually going to bring the purple all the way up to right about here. I'm feeling like that's a good thing. And then the purple is actually going to continue in right like that. Let's put a little bit more here. That's good. And right in this little guy. There we go. We might as well go ahead and fill in this whole little area. There we go. It's nice and quiet here today. We've had summer camp at Art Space all summer and it ended on Friday. And as much as I love the rapscallions um, and the pitter patter of little feet, it's been really nice having it all quiet again. There we go. Perfect. And now we're going to continue up kind of a bigger blob and with this I'm gonna go just a little bit higher up because you know sometimes you know the purple is just really working for me so I want to do a little bit more with that so see how I'm just kind of feathering it up maybe even a little bit more just over top of that blue we're just kind of layering them and that'll soften that edge too and then we're gonna go back to the nitric blue and I'm going to start with this blending area. So right there, I'm going to kind of just, there we go. I'm just kind of feathering a little bit of the blue into the purple, the purple into the blue. That's looking good. You just want to avoid having a line of color, unless that's what you're going for. You can certainly set piece, you know, set enamels side by side if you want like a really vivid line. And you know, they're not going to run together all that much. I think people think that um, because you know, once it gets to be melted and liquid, it's going to be running all over the place. That is definitely not the case. So anyway, so we're going to do all the blue all the way up here. And I think this is looking good. It's always a surprise. There's still things I'm learning about enameling. And sometimes there's just unexpected things as well. But you just kind of got to roll with the punches. There we go. See how I'm just kind of feathering right like that. So I've, I've brought the purple up a little bit, um, which pleases me. And let me just get a little bit more right in. I can see I want a little bit of purple right there. Right here. There we go. And maybe a little bit more right there. And let's have a look and make sure that none of the blue or the purple has gotten into any of our areas that we don't want it and it looks really good so we're gonna let this dry and then and I'm actually probably just gonna let it air dry I'm not gonna do too much of the um, 
wicking of it because I don't want to mess up this little blend that I did. I could probably wick it down at the top and the bottom. Um, in fact, I will do that and then save myself a couple minutes. So just at the top and the bottom, we'll just ever so carefully wick some of the moisture away. Let's do it at the top too. See if we can do that. There we go. And I'm just gonna go put that under the lamp and then we'll fire it and we'll see. I think after that, we're gonna be ready to switch to clear, which is gonna be very exciting. So be right back. This background is looking really nice. See, I love how this is blending. Like it's almost, there's not a line here. It goes from this beautiful, deep purple kind of through into this lovely luscious blue. I am liking it a lot. So I love all the colors on here. And so we are going to go ahead and switch to clear. And we're going to be using the 2020, which is what we used at the beginning. And you can see this is dry. I have just freshly sifted it using a size 200 sifter. So basically what stayed in the sifter, the bigger pieces, is what I kept. And then I discarded all the powdery stuff, the residue, at the bottom of it. And I'm just going to go ahead and just add some very clean distilled water. And let's see what we can do. And I'm going to do three coats. So not too thick, especially you know, the penchant for yellowing is always on the table with these unleaded. So I'm gonna go nice and nice clean water. Let's get a slightly larger brush. I think we can do that though. And let's add some water to the piece as well because it'll be easier. And I'm just gonna do a nice even coat over the whole thing. And then we will let it dry and we'll fire it. And we're gonna do that three times total is what I'm, generally my experience has told me that it's about three times, so. And I'm just going to start in the middle as is my want and just work my way out. I'm hoping for the best, <laughs> as always. And I'm looking for, I can see a little dot. If you can see a dot, don't put the dot on. Leave the dot in the container. And some people always ask if they could sift this. And you know, I don't see why not. I just, I like to have control over where I'm putting it. Uh, but I don't, I suppose you can try sifting it and let me know how that goes. Um, you have to do a lot more grinding on this area, because you'll get it all over. But I guess if you wiped it off. Um, again, it's your piece, your rules, your enamel, your rules. Try something. You should never be afraid to try. You know, see what works. Um, I'm still, you know, sometimes I get into old habits and I don't remember why I, why I do something. And it's good to evaluate. Like, am I doing something only because somebody like Sandra told me to do this years ago and Sandra's moved on and found a better way to do it. Um, that's, well, <laughs> but you know, it's like there were things that I, I did for a long time that I only did because that was how I first learned how to do it. And it was working, but it might not have been the best solution. So honestly, never be afraid to, maybe not on like the, the piece you wanna you know, make as a special gift to your mom, but on smaller pieces, those are great opportunities. Little pairs of earrings, you know, just to test things out. Um, see if you like it, see if it works, and take notes because oh, I, I could do something and I'll think I'll never forget this terrible tragedy that befell my enamel piece. But if I don't write it down, Chances are uh, history will indeed repeat itself and I will make the same mistake twice. So I do keep a little notebook and I write notes in it to my future self and future self definitely is thankful because especially when there's like color, um, like I'm gonna make a note about this because this opal blue that it goes a little, you know, yellowy, um, but it's kind of a purple yellowy. Um, just so in the future, I can, you know, work with that, um, you know, play up 
the fact that it goes a little yellow. And if I don't want that, I'll use the periwinkle. So, you know, that is especially with colors. It's really good to, even if you just write it on the jar, like, you know, doesn't play well with this other color or, you know, any kind of note to yourself is good information that your future self will be happy about. Um, and also, if you find something that seems to be weird, um, why not do some test strips? Like, is this something that happens every time? Or, like, if there's a lot, of, there's not things that can't be explained, but sometimes it's good to know if it's user er error or if it's just a temperature problem or um, a materials issue. So if you do find that you're having a particular issue, definitely, it's just like a computer program. You have to, like, see if you can get it to happen again and you know write down what you were doing when it happened um all right there we go see now i've i've given you my lecture and so this is a nice even coat and we're going to let that dry in fact i'm going to go ahead and blot it because i'm also feeling lazy so let's get some very clean paper towel and here's my blotting method for there we go look at all that that moisture and then just carefully there we go. And I'm still going to let that dry for a minute or two before I put that in the kiln. And we'll be back and we're going to do that two more times. All right, this one has been fired with a single coat of the clear and it's looking really nice. So we're going to do that again. And so I guess I'll, I'll probably speed it up. You don't need to see it. So I'm going to put a whole, exactly what I did. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to fire it and then I'm going to do it a third time. And if you find that it only takes two, you know, maybe you should go a little bit thinner because I feel that I would rather, especially with this 2020, go a little bit on the, the thinner side and have to do an extra coat rather than go a little too thick and then have it be cloudy. So anyway, I'm going to continue on. Um, and yeah, you're going to be like, Sandra, what do you even mean by what is too thick? What is too thin? Um, but it's kind of thick enough that it coats but not so much that it's glop, you know, just a huge pile. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, but basically, you want it to take three coats of the clear to get just to the top of the wires um, and not over the wires. I mean, it's fine if there's glass over the wires, we're gonna grind it down, but you don't want it to be like well over the wires. So that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. And I'm gonna stop talking so I know. <laughs> Do I ever? <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you this story about when we were in Italy one time. Um, we were on some tour. We were going to um, just outside of Rome. Uh, what are those? It's beautiful. Oh, um, Tivoli. Tivoli. We were, and we. It was one of those. You know, we'd done a tour, and it was like just a, like kind of a private car with my cousin and my husband and my cousin's wife, and we were in the back and my husband, Warren, was in the front. And, you know, we couldn't even hear what the guy was saying because it was like, we were so far in the back, whatever. And he turned to my husband and he said, your wife, she talks a lot, but she does not listen. And so he always tells me that. Uh, and um, I try to tell them we couldn't hear anyway. And I was just making polite conversation. So I talk a lot, but I do not listen. But then I said a perfect grazie, and he said, oh, your wife, is she from Rome? That's exactly how we said it, too. And I'll probably edit out this entire story, um, but prego. Those are the two words that I can say apparently very well um, in Italian. So, yeah, it's not too thick. See, it's getting a little dry here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water and clean water. At this point, I mean, I'm, I should have probably mentioned it, but clean water, keep changing your water. If you can see stuff floating in your water, that stuff could end up on your All right, this is the second coat 
of clear and it's looking really good and you can see we're getting very close to the tops of the wires so just one more nice thin coat is going to do it and so we're going to do it right now in fact we'll we'll come back when it's been fired how's that because i don't have any more good stories so I Good morning, everybody. Um, yes, it has been an evening. I spent the night doing wondrous non-enamel things. And this morning we are going to use the jewel tool to do this lovely piece. And we're just gonna use the jewel tool for the very first uh, grind of this. I call it the big grind. And of course, you don't need to have a jewel tool to grind your enamels. You can use a sanding stick, which we'll be using later for some finessing, but you could start with that sanding stick just as easily so anyway i've got it ready to go i've got my jewel tool and you can see or can you see that we are using the coarse diamond or the medium diamond will be fine but any one of these diamond um, grit discs will be exactly what we need and make sure you get it on here nice and tight because you don't want it popping off in your face when you're doing it, it won't hurt you but you know so that's good we're going to get a little water in this little reservoir there we go and then also go ahead because this gets dusty and let's wear our mask which i'm going to put on right now all right and um it has a variable setting i kind of like a medium i don't know so it's like that's off that's too low right there is good and what we're going to do is what's nice is see how you can see straight through the blade that's what's nice about the jewel tool and what we're going to do is we're going to go one time all the way around and then we're going to remove all the glass from the edges we're never we're not going to do any uh, edge work on this just the top We can get a little grabby once you get towards the edge, so just a light but firm grasp on your piece is good. And I'm dipping after every time. Also wear eye protection. I've got glasses on, so, but if you don't, definitely some eye protection would be good for this. Oops. See how it kind of grabs it a little bit? That is fine. I find if you hold it um, kind of perpendicular to the edge, it gets it's a little bit less grabby. So this way, as opposed to this way. Let's just have a look. let's see I want to make sure all the glass is off the silver I'm not actually so much concerned about 
what's going on. I went over the whole thing once, but we're gonna really do more with that with the sanding stick. There we go. Let's make sure, have a really good look right here. Alrighty. Oh, wait, hold on, I can see. You can dry this with a paper towel and that'll help you see if there's any glass on your silver. All right, that is looking good. And we are done with the jewel tool for now. Well, we're done with it for this project. Um, this is pretty much all I use the jewel tool for is this initial um, grind because after this, I kind of moved to uh, different hand tools and um, my Fordham, I, I will be using that a little bit later. But this did the heavy lifting of taking all the glass off the silver and just, you know, taking the wires down just a little bit. Uh, but you can see, you know, it needs some more finessing. But we're going to do that next. All right, now we are back at my desk here and I have basically just, I've got a tea towel draped right, this is the edge of my desk because I'm gonna use this and I have a tea towel in my lap just because things are gonna dribble down and I have some nice clean water right here, very nice. And the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna use a diamond sanding strip and they're getting a little hard to come by. Um, when I have them in my Etsy store, they tend to sell out pretty fast, um, but they also sell this diamond grit. Um, they sell it on like a, it's attached to like a sponge, which is definitely do it. So I feel like the sponge is a little harder to maneuver, but it's, if you can't find one of these sanding strips, and this one's just attached with some Velcro to a, a, a stick, um, you can use a sanding stick, I mean a sanding sponge. And I know that they have them at enameling.com and other places. So if you Google diamond strip, sanding sponge you'll probably find them um anyway so what you can see what we have is um i've taken it's pretty rough but that's exactly what i want um and there's lots of little shiny areas and so and if you kind of look at it look how kind of lumpy gumpy it is we're going to smooth that all out um, but i think i'm going to deal with the edges first just because when we deal the edges it's going to make a little lip and so i'm going to dip it in the water and use the side of the the side of the desk and just, I kind of like to go back to front because you don't want to accidentally, if you go in in this direction, you could conceivably flake off some of your counter enamel. So let me go down just a hair. There we go. Comfort everybody. So I'm just going around the edge, dipping, removing any glass and kind of smoothing it out. We'll finesse the edges some more later, but this is just kind of, removing any glass. I'm not gonna worry anything about, I am gonna deal with this bale, but we're gonna do that at the end. Um, there we go, it's looking good. And if you have kind of an odd shape piece that's not nice and round, you might have to go in with um, kind of more specific files to really get into the corners. Um, but luckily, because this is a nice, easy teardrop shape, we can, it's easy, everything is easier if you do a simple shape. There we go. And I'm just having a nice look. There's, I've been pretty good about keeping my trivets clean, so I don't have any big trivet marks on the box bottom, which is fine. But you'd deal with those right now if you did, so that's good. So now I've done the sides and they are clean. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use the edge of the table. And remember, I've got this bale, so I don't wanna press it down on the bale and squish it. Um, so I'm good, but I am gonna really use this, the edge of the table to support the piece uh, because it's just gonna, I don't ever wanna do a lot of like in the middle of the air because you're wasting energy. You're really not gonna get the, you know, oomph that you need. So I'm resting it on the table and I'm going to kind of start in the middle, remembering that this thing is round. So I'm not going to do a lot of right on top. Boop, 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 boop. Um, I'm kind of thinking in a round, I'm kind of curling down as I'm doing it, but I am using a fair amount of pressure here because I'm basically smoothing out the glass. 
and you could do more on the if you don't like the stage you could do more on the jewel tool i just find that the jewel tool can be a little aggressive and give you know if you're not really careful with it you get this kind of weird faceted thing going um, but and i also like i like hand grinding so but yeah you could take a little farther with the jewel tool if you really don't like this step but my my rules for the day we're doing it this way for this but you can do it however you want all right and what i'm doing is i'm just kind of shaping the enamels and you can see i keep dipping it in the water and so you can see already see how much more smooth it is um oh, and we'll get some paper towel and see where we are the way to kind of see where you are is to dry it off and look for any shiny bits and then you can see i've got a little bit of shiny right here and here um, and a little all over it means i'm just going to go a little bit farther if there's any really deep divots i am going to backtrack because you don't want to go so far down that you go through your color we're not in any danger of that right yet but if you have a really deep divot and you keep grinding down to try to get to it uh, you may grind all the way through your colors and you'll be very sad um, so instead of that you would wash it put a little bit of clear enamel on all the shiny bits uh, put it in the kiln uh, but we're going to keep going i'm feeling oops i'm feeling still confident about this piece so And we'll deal with the silver because there's a lot of big, a lot of big things in the silver, but we'll take care of that next. There we go. All right. You just kind of want it to feel like a river rock. So that is feeling like if you close your eyes, I don't want to feel any of the wires and it feels really nice so we're going to move on to the next step which the next step is kind of a dance of back and forth in between different sandpapers but let's go ahead and get that set up all right the next step that we're going to do is we're going to start addressing the silver rim which is going to take a little of extra work because it's a big fat silver rim and you can see there's lots of scratches in it and our first thing is we're going to use our fordham tool uh, you could do this all by hand with sandpaper but the for if you have access to a one of these tools it's just going to save you a little bit of time and i've got kind of a round um, mandrel on there and it's I love these little sanding discs we're going to be using two this is what kind of my go-to one is um, I think this is 80 microns which I have no idea what it is I think what is that 200 grit or something like that it's pretty it's pretty rough and then we're also going to be using this one which is a little finer so the blue and the brown and obviously you can buy those at Rio Grande yes um, I feel like I should get a kickback for that but I don't I don't all right so and you can see they're extra sticky which is nice and they come around and you just want to make sure you kind of put it on evenly there we go and I'm gonna go over the whole thing once but I'm really gonna be focusing on the silver part so and I'm keeping I'm keeping a lot of water on this All right, so this is the, the blue, the slightly lighter one. We are going to work our way through three, at least three different sandy papers. These are um, just regular, really kind of nice, wet, dry sandy papers. The green one we're gonna start with, I believe that's 400. Then we're gonna move to the gray, which is 600. And then finally blue is the 1200. And maybe we'll, if we're feeling ambitious, we can throw the pink in. That would be, I don't know, 4,000 or something dumb like that. Not dumb, wonderful. So let's get started. Um, 
And here's the thing about this. Um, we're going to kind of, I've got just, this is just a paint stick, you can see, that I put a little felt. The felt is optional. Um, any kind of a paint stick from the hardware store will be great. Um, I like, I've kind of moved to this thicker one, which is, um, I've kind of been using this one for ages, which see how it's a little bit thinner. Uh, but I really like having this, all this extra um, surface area for my sanding. And I'm just going to wrap it around. And then as I go, I can un unwind it a little bit. Um, and so let me actually move this back to the edge here so we can see. There's, there's my lap so I don't dribble into it. And I'm just going to, you know, work my way around. And here's the thing, we're going to kind of like go around, look for scratches, and then backtrack to you know, the, the Fordham tool if we need to move forward. Like it's always a dance of kind of back and forth thing. If there is a scratch that is not coming out, sometimes you're gonna have to backtrack to a heavier duty um, thing. But if you are just methodical and patient, some days everything is really easy and some days it feels like the scratches are trying to like, like it's a seriously a, conspiracy of silver scratches because you get rid of one and then you create another but you know patience you will be rewarded with diligence and patience so anyway yes i'm going to go all the way around and at this point we're not maybe with this one we're re removing a little bit of the glass but not much we're really polishing the silver at this point because we are going to put this back in i don't know if you can hear my kiln clicking away in the background it is ready to do a final fire polish on this little guy. All right, I am on the blue and it's looking pretty good. just about ready. I might as well do a little pink because I have it right here. Um, sometimes I do pink, sometimes I'm too lazy to do pink. We are going to put this whole thing in the tumbler for a final polish later, um, but might as well do a little pink. Pink is good for showing up any little micro scratches. Um, so you have to be prepared to, to hear what the pink is telling you. And if the pink is saying you need to backtrack, you gotta listen. There we go. And pink is telling me good news today, so. Or <laughs> do I not listen? <laughs> All right, and the edges, and this is just about ready for the final fire. There we go. All right, you know what we're gonna do is, let's see if I can reach this brush. Um, some regular dish soap. I'm gonna walk over to the sink in the other room because I don't have a sink in my studio. Um, and this is just, it's not, a, it's not a fiberglass brush. It's just a regular natural bristle brush that I got really cheaply and I snipped the end off so it's a good little scrubby brush. And some warm soapy water with some really inexpensive dishwashing soap. And then we're gonna rinse it in distilled water and then put it in the kiln probably a little longer. We want it to definitely have a time to melt, crack, and then reheal perfectly well. So probably closer to two and a half minutes, um, three if you have like maybe a slightly cooler thing. And so we will do that. So scrubby, scrubby, and I'll be right back. All right, I have washed this with soap and water really good front and the back and I've rinsed it in distilled water and dried it with some clean paper towels can always write a little bit more and we're gonna go ahead and fire this and get that shine back on the glass so we'll be right back so two and a half minutes um, will probably be a good time to do it all right this is looking really nice it's nice and shiny and nice and good on the front. Remember the back is made of sterling, so we need to kind of polish that up before we put it in the tumbler because there we go. 
Yeah, the tumbler is not going to remove. There we go. That's looking good. The tarnish. So there we go. All right. Now, as far as the tumbler goes, it's stainless steel shot. I've got actually two sizes in here. I've got tiny little spheres and kind of little round knobs. And there's just enough water to cover it. And then I also use a little bit of this sunsheen burnishing compound. Oh, there it is. Um, and I might put a little dollop in because this has been sitting around. Just a little bit of that. And yeah, just enough water to cover the thing. If you fill it too much with water, it's not going to be quite as effective. And then we're just going to put our little guy right in there. Say goodbye. Have a lovely little tumble. And then now my fingers are all wet. I'm going to make this hard to put this dumb lid on. But anyway, so I am going to tumble this for, you know what, 40 minutes, 45 minutes will be a good time to do it. And see, oh goodness. Let's see. There we go, oh, it, there we go. All right, now we're gonna put that on the tumbler for 45 minutes and then I bet we'll be done. It's all very exciting. All right, we just pulled this out of the tumbler and it's looking really, really nice. The back is nice and clean and it's shiny and the colors are lovely. So I'm very pleased with this. So anyway, well, thanks for joining me for yet another tutorial. Um, I think the next tutorial that I do, we're going to do some reds. We're going to switch over to the um, leaded colors and try out a whole bunch of different kinds of reds and pinks, which I know people will be excited about. But I've got a couple in between, so think of that as probably mid-September is when the next kind of big tutorial series is going to be hitting. Anyway, so thanks so much if you enjoyed this tutorial. Definitely check out my website, sandramekewin.com. I teach classes, come visit me in Raleigh, North Carolina and take a wonderful workshop and we can do this side by side together and I can help troubleshoot any problems or maybe you won't have any trouble because it's just that much fun. So anyway, thanks again and I will uh, be looking forward to doing another video very soon. Thanks again.